All right, everyone, get ready, because today we're diving deep into the phases of matter. That's right. We're talking about the nitty gritty of how yeah. things melt, boil, and even what's up with that mysterious plasma everyone's always talking about. And you've come to the right place to learn about it. So to kick things off, we all know matter is made of particles. Right. But what might not be obvious is that those particles, oh. they're constantly moving. They're constantly on the move, yeah. So how does that translate to like the stuff we see every day? Well, just imagine um, you've got a pot of water simmering on the stove. Okay. Seems pretty calm, right? Right. But at the microscopic level, it's a whole different story. Okay. Those water molecules are in constant motion. Gotcha. Jostling around like a crowd at a concert. And the hotter it gets. It's a mosh pit. The wilder the dance party, right? Exactly. More heat, more energy means those molecules are really cutting loose. Exactly. That's where the kinetic theory of matter comes in. Oh, okay. It's the science behind those tiny mosh pits. I like it. The faster the molecules move, the higher the temperature. So in a frozen ice cube, those molecules are still moving. They're just doing like a much slower, more chilled out groove. Absolutely. The music never stops at the molecular level. I like that. Even in the coldest depths of space, there's a tiny bit of vibration. Wow. Absolute zero, where all motion stops, is more of a theoretical limit. Okay. It's kind of like that uh, perfect dance partner who never steps on your toes, you know? Okay. I like where this is going. Yeah. So we've got all these tiny dancers twirling around. Yeah. But what keeps them from just spinning off into the vast universe? Right. Why doesn't everything just evaporate into a thin gas? Well, because uh, even on the dance floor, there's always a little bit of attraction. Yeah. And that's where intermolecular forces come in. Okay. Or IFs, as we like to call them. IFs. And right. these are like the invisible bonds that hold molecules together. Great. Like... Uh, tiny tiny magnets so the stronger the magnet yes the closer the dancers yeah and the more likely they are to be yeah a solid you got it solids have the strongest intermolecular forces okay which is why they hold their shape so well makes sense take a diamond for instance okay those carbon atoms they're locked in a tight embrace yeah by incredibly strong ifs which is why diamonds are famously hard and durable so diamonds are like the ultimate dance partners right. totally locked in never letting go right but what about liquids are those molecules doing like a more casual swing dance yeah exactly mm -hmm. in liquids those intermolecular forces they're a bit weaker okay it gives the molecule some wiggle room to move around okay that's why you can pour a liquid you know those molecules can slide past each other right but you can't like easily compress it like a gas because those molecules in a liquid they're already pretty cozy yeah. there's not a lot of extra space to squeeze them into precisely okay now let's crank up the heat even more all right and things get really wild okay we enter the realm of gases where those intermolecular forces are so weak yeah it's like everyone's gone solo on the dance floor oh wow the molecules are just bouncing off each other zipping around at high speeds wow and just taking up as much space as they can. Okay, so that explains why gases can be compressed. Yeah. Those molecules have plenty of room to like huddle closer together. Exactly, and it's also why um, a small leak in a gas pipe can quickly fill a room with like that rotten egg smell. Oh, right. Those uh, gas molecules are not staying put. Talk about clearing the dance floor. Right. But you mentioned something earlier about another state of matter yeah. beyond gas, something even more energetic, plasma, right? Yes. It sounds like we've moved from the dance floor to a rave. It's definitely a whole different scene. Plasma is like a supercharged gas. Okay. Where the atoms themselves begin to break apart. Oh. Huh. Were those electrons we talked about? Yeah. The ones that determine how atoms bond to each other? Oh, yeah. Those tiny dancers are hard at work. Right. So in plasma, those electrons get so much energy that they break free from their atoms. Wow. Creating a sea of electrically charged particles. So plasma isn't just some sci-fi concept. No. It's actually the most common state of matter in the universe. Exactly. Stars are basically giant balls of plasma. Really? Powered by nuclear fusion reactions happening deep within their cores. Wow. And uh, closer to home, you actually see plasma every time you turn on a fluorescent light bulb. Wait, really? Those everyday light bulbs, they contain plasma. Absolutely. Inside those bulbs, electricity flows through a gas, stripping electrons from the atoms and creating a plasma. Wow. And it's that plasma that emits the light we see. That's incredible. Yeah. Okay, so we've covered the four states of matter. Right. From the chilled out vibes of solids to the high energy chaos of plasma. 
But what about the transitions between them? Yeah. What's actually happening when a substance changes state? We've all seen ice melt and water boil. Right. But I'm guessing there's more to it than meets the eye. You're right. There's a whole lot of molecular drama unfolding during those seemingly simple transformations. Oh. We call them phase changes, and they're all about energy, adding it or taking it away. So it's like the DJ changing the tempo of the music. Yeah. More energy, faster dancing, things heat up, and eventually those molecules break free. You're on the right track. Let's take the example of melting ice. Okay. As you add heat to ice, those water molecules absorb the energy and they start to vibrate faster. Right. But here's the key. Okay. During a phase change, all that added energy goes into loosening those intermolecular forces, not into making the molecules move faster. So it's like using energy to loosen the grip of those molecular magnets, not to make them spin faster. Exactly. It's a change in relationship status rather than just getting more hyped on the dance floor. Precisely. And that's why the temperature of the ice stays constant at zero degrees Celsius while it's melting. Oh. Even though you're adding heat. Uh -huh. okay. All that energy is going into breaking those intermolecular bonds, allowing the water molecules to move more freely from their fixed positions in the solid state. So it's like everyone on the dance floor is pushing against their partners, trying to break free and move to the beat. Right. It takes energy to break those bonds, even if the music itself isn't getting any faster. Exactly. And once those bonds are broken, the water molecules can finally start moving more freely as a liquid. Only then will the temperature start to rise again as you add more heat. Okay, that makes so much sense. It's like that initial burst of energy is all about changing the relationship dynamics. Yes. Not just ramping up the intensity. Right. So when water boils and turns into steam, yeah. we're giving those molecules enough energy to completely ditch their dance partners right. and go totally solo. Exactly. Boiling is like the grand finale of the molecular dance party. Okay. Where those water molecules gain enough energy to completely overcome their intermolecular attraction. Right and zoom off as independent gas molecules. Which explains why a steam burn can be so much worse than a hot water burn. Yes. Those steam molecules are carrying a lot more energy yeah. from like breaking those bonds. Exactly. Okay, so we've been talking about heat affecting these phase changes. Right. But pressure plays a role too, right? Pressure plays a crucial role, yes. Think about like a pressure cooker. Right, right. You increase the pressure inside the cooker. Yeah which lets you cook food faster. Exactly. But how does that work on like a molecular level? Well, it all goes back to those escaping molecules. Okay. Higher pressure makes it harder for those energized water molecules to escape from the liquid phase Okay. and become steam. So it's like trying to leave a crowded room. Yes. The more people pushing back, right. the harder you have to work yeah. to like break free. That's a great analogy. And because those molecules need more energy to escape as steam, yeah. the boiling point of water actually increases under pressure. Huh. That's why food cooks faster in a pressure cooker. Oh. The water is boiling at a higher temperature. This is all starting to click Ugh. now. Yeah. We've gone from dancing molecules to pressure cookers. Right. And I'm realizing just how much we take these phase changes for granted. It's true. We interact with phase changes every day, often without even realizing it. Yeah. From the ice melting in your drink right. to the steam rising from a hot cup of coffee. Right. These transformations are happening all around us. And knowing the science behind it yeah. gives you a whole new appreciation for these really subtle but powerful forces that are at play. Yeah, definitely. Well, on that note, yeah. I think we've reached the end of our deep dive. It's been fun. Into the phases of matter. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Until next time, keep those brains buzzing, and remember, there's always more to explore. <laughs>